Sabona Mlaleli, Sabona Mbugeli. You're back on Umsunduzi News Podcast. And today I'm your host. So today what we've got for you, I don't know, but maybe some of us always wonder to ourselves when we see these fans, they're written area-based management. Do we really know? Do we really understand what they do? Who they are? Yes, he's into Zagama Spala, he's into Zagama Spala, but Zen Zan. Today with me is Mr. Timber Lyons, but Gapando Gogum Kekala Makul, Zom Fumel, which has Tazu Tuba. Mr. Lyons? Thank you, Sissi Gamonga Kulu Nigazi Tuba. Look Kulumana when I'm a lady. E. Kamalam Gingu Timber Lyons, E. Kaluk Seven Zagama Spala. Um, Plagawan go December 1997. <laughs> I'm now almost 25 years in this municipality. Okay. I have moved uh, to the levels of the municipality, and three years ago I was appointed as the senior manager of area based management. Congratulations! Uh, that's what APM is. Okay, in dealing with APM, I need to go back to some situations. Mm-hmm. I think yeah, as government, yeah, I think we have tried quite a number of processes and procedures of ensuring good yeah, the service delivery to the people. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are moving from yeah, your one shop centers, uh, multi purpose centers, okay. and ultimately we then moved into area based management. Okay. Uh, in the the concept it itself is to ensure that uh, uh, we find a municipality in each and every area, ward to ward, mm-hmm. within the municipality. Uh, our theme is clear that we are rooting government within the municipality. Okay. So in terms of the Msunduzi municipality, we have five areas: Idenale, Vulindlela, Imbali, Northern areas, and Central. Okay. Now I'm saying we are divided into these areas strictly because I want to say that we want to ensure that at Vulinlela, mm-hmm. uh, people of Vulinlela see the municipality and the municipality is rooted within where they are. That's where we have our offices. Okay. At Imbi Idenale, it's the same thing. At Tige Imbali, it's the same thing, central and northern areas. But critically, what perhaps has not been the situation is that again, it's not just giving offices of area-based management in that issue. The task is clear for area-based management. Mm-hmm. Is that now that you have been given an office, make sure that all services within the municipalities again are represented where you are. Okay. Unfortunately, again, that is still work in progress. Mm-hmm. And we are hoping that at least again, in the near future again, We'll see these mini municipalities in, in these areas, and also that yeah, the managers in those areas again yeah, will become mini municipal managers as well. Okay, that's the concept in itself. It's ensuring that again, yeah, firstly, is to ensure that there are services, all services again, yeah, are within a walking distance from where people are, and the second one is to ensure that again, yeah, uh, they we are fast tracking service delivery. It's okay. not just a, a usual situation where people get come in and wait and uh, which people think it's a government situation. But for us, again, I think the implementation of area-based management was to ensure that again, we fast-track again, the issue of services to the people. Okay. Uh, we are supported mainly by the pieces of legislations and framework. Mm-hmm. Uh, one being the issue of local government, ensuring that there's accountability, ensuring that there's economic development, okay. ensuring that at least uh, there's a uh, public participation, which in fact uh, also touches in the issue of your Systems Act okay. and also your, your Municipal Structures Act as well. But in the main, we want to ensure that uh, there's also an issue of public consultation where we are dealing with issues. Okay. I heard you touch on public participation and fast-tracking um, 
uh, thing, service delivery of the municipality. Example for someone in, in layman terms, for someone who just wants to understand the day to day. Um, let's say, for example, the mayor has a youth event mm-hmm. um, at at Vulindlela District, where, wherever, or Mbal, a unit one. Where does area based management fall in within that in ensuring uh, public participation? Uh, wherever we are, mm-hmm. the first thing that we deal with is to ensure that there is a lot of stakeholder engagement. Okay. So if a mayor comes to the area, whichever area we are talking about, mm-hmm. uh, we should be the first call to say that on this day we'll be coming here to deal with such issues. We should be. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, I'm saying this because yeah, sometimes it happens and sometimes it does not happen. Now being rooted within those communities, the stakeholders in those areas mm-hmm. are part and parcel of us. Mm-hmm. So we, we deal with them in the main. So should that not happen, we would then bring those stakeholders along, make them aware of events, awarenesses, whatever situations that we are dealing with that are coming through, and then they will be part and parcel of those events. Okay. Uh, there are many ways that we are dealing with in terms of ensuring uh, we visit them, mm-hmm. we invite them perhaps in terms of the media issues that we are dealing with, mm-hmm. and we also do loud hailing to ensure that at least they, they understand what's happening when anybody, the mayor or any other person that is coming into town, if they had gone through the right channel again, mm-hmm. that's our process that we'll be able to deal with those issues. So the loud hailing that we hear, um, f- like right now there's there's uh, rabies vaccinations mm. and sterilization programs going through through the animal pound unit. So those those loud hailing, is it safe to say that's, that's area-based management? Truly that's area-based management. Okay. We're the only unit in the municipality was able to do, to deal to do loud hailing. Okay. Uh, and again, I would, it would be fascinating to understand that again. I think we've had situations where officials, people are not wanted by communities. But when we go to those communities, mm-hmm. because we form part and parcel of those communities mm-hmm. as the business unit, people accept us. Okay. And at times, one of the other issues that we are dealing with is also to monitor and also conflict management wherever we are dealing with issues. We've had a number of projects which almost have counted to the halt. Okay. Uh, and we had to come in and find out what are the issues and be able to deal with such issues again. And those projects then continue. As it is now, there is, I think, one project here in terms of Nabali, project here with teachers, young kids, okay. uh, which we are dealing with. We to try and, and resolve those matters together with the counselors and the organization that's dealing with that project as well. That's in the most uh, where we find it's ourselves. It's already, it's underway, it's, it's already underway started. And, it's already started. And the name yeah. of this project? It's a Nibali project. The project itself is to ensure that, uh, you would understand that there's been a lot of cry mm-hmm. out there regarding our kids at, pri- at primary school, even at high school, mm-hmm. unable to read. Now, the Nibali program, you would see it's a program already on TV where they teach young kids. Okay. But we are now bringing this program into the areas where we are. They will be teaching the parents, who are the parents of the, through the ECDs, mm-hmm. uh, through the parents of those children at the ECDs. But we are also teaching the practitioners themselves uh, in order that to get the issue of learning and, and training and people being able to speak. Yeah. And also to write here, yeah, it started right at the beginning where people are. We want to close the gap where we have these situations. Interesting. And understanding possibly that uh, that's also another facet of air based management, mm-hmm. that we are not necessarily a, 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 a static uh, business unit where you would say you. this is the issue. Mm. I mean, you, we are now dealing with the issue of, of, of ECDs, mm-hmm. the children in ECDs, and issue of education as well. Okay. We find ourselves in those issues where, where there's no other department that will deal with all these other issues. Recently, we've just spoken about the issue of rabies mm-hmm. and the animal pound as well. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't get a business unit that is doing both these things at the same time. 
yeah. but that's the uniqueness of the airspace management. We prom- we probably do almost anything in this municipality, um, and almost everything that yeah, has got to do with the community out, out there. The issue of rabies, uh, your health service could have done it, your your just in your agriculture could mm-hmm. have done it, but we took it upon ourselves to say ours is to ensure that we bring services to the people and we avoid situations where there will be probably issues such as rabies. Mm-hmm. Now, when we had that there were issues, we got in touch with uh, SAPS, uh, SPCA, mm-hmm. and we said to SPCA, how can you assist us in ensuring that we curtail and we leave and deal with the issue of rabies for, uh, in our areas? Uh, as it is yesterday, we had our, our second to last year, a program where we vaccinated uh, dogs and cats to get in Bali. But before that, we have got, we have been in Edendale, we have been in Vulinlela, mm, and next mm. week we are going to the northern areas. So suffice to say, area-based management is a microphone for the municipality, mm. in a way. Yes, uh, we. It's twofold for us. Okay. Uh, the MM would, will tell you that yeah, you, we, we don't want you to to be focused out mm-hmm. there, but also focus internally. Mm-hmm. Uh, ours is, we call ourselves the eyes and ears of the municipality and the community. Okay. Because again, we take issues from the community and we bring them to the municipality. And we look for departments and find departments and say, you have not done correctly in these areas. Mm. So we assist the, the, the communities there. But we also then assist the municipality in finding out what are the issues from the communities yeah. to the municipalities. They mainly, it's two issues. They used to call ourselves the eyes and ears, mm-hmm. which we think are for the municipalities. But there were times when we were called also green scorpions. Because okay. we were reporting on issues that some of our uh, our fellow uh, 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 employees are not doing out there, I that see. they were not supposed to be doing. I see. It was a crack. It was not bad for them, mm-hmm. for, for us, because people saw us as, as, as a Zimbimbi. Mm-hmm. Uh, they would call us that. But it's, yeah. it's not about us. It's about the community out there. If you fail to do your job that you are supposed to be mm-hmm. doing, which you get paid mm-hmm. for, We'll have to report that, and again, you know, you, you shouldn't be, be part and parcel. Yeah. Yeah. you shouldn't be part and parcel of this municipality or any other department, for that matter. Because uh, through the OSS, your Operation Sumasake, mm-hmm. we are also reporting issues that other departments, not necessarily the municipalities, are not doing. Yeah. And we get those issues and take them to the departments to say, on the, at this area. There are children that are living by themselves. At this area, there are children with ID's. Mm-hmm. So all these issues we are dealing with, and not necessarily the municipalities, where we bring them up to your local task team of the OSS and also cascade them up your DTT, LTT as mm-hmm. well. So it's it's a lot of work, and I think we are really enjoying that work because for us, we are making a difference I'm out g- there. I'm glad you're here today because I think a lot of people really do think area-based management for those who know just a bit about it mm. really do think that it's it, it's it's just a middleman between the municipality and the community of which it is essentially at its core mm. but there's so many branches to it mm. and mm. through your explanations and walking us through um, what you guys do in your department i think it's become quite evident that it's much more than that it's much more in depth Mm. while we're there talk to us walk walk with us through idp where does area-based management land itself in that Mm. thanks i think that's one of the issues which we would call for ourselves public both public participation Mm -hmm. but also then consulting the people out there Mm. I think government in in an instance took a decision that there would not be a top-down government. There would rather be a bottom-up situation. Mm -hmm. So you need to find a mechanism then which deals with the issue of your, how do you deal with the issue of your your, your down-up issues. And the, the process that we want to deal with is ensuring that in each and every 
corner of South Africa. Mm-hmm. Uh, as a municipalities, our corners are our wards. So we would find ourselves ensuring that yeah, each and every ward has what you call as the ward plan. Okay. So we would go out to communities through the processes of your uh, community-based planning, mm-hmm. uh, derive issues from the communities. Okay. And once we have derived those issues, take them out as they are desired outcomes mm-hmm. on what they would want to have in those communities. And once we have those desired outcomes, they would then become, we would prioritize them okay. uh, as the communities, uh, they, because we don't have a pool of monies, we cannot do everything at the same time, we would mm. prioritize them. And that prioritization of those issues, then they become, from desired outcomes, they become projects or programs. Mm-hmm. And then you prioritize them, and then you take them to the IDP and say, IDP, at Ward 15, they don't need a school. Okay. Uh, they would need a police station. Okay. At Ward 28, uh, there are bridges, they, are, they, they don't have uh, uh, human settlements. You know, right. There is land, but there's no human settlements. There are a lot of issues that come out of, mm. of, of what people mm. want. And for us, it's a first call. It's the first thing that we want to say that it's not your counsellor that is saying this is what people want. It's not an organization, whether it's a party political organization, NGO, NPO, that says mm. this is what people want. But we are receiving information of what people want directly from where, from the people themselves. Yeah. And we take that and bring it in as a, a ward plan for that community. Mm-hmm. In municipalities, we've got 41 wards, so we've, we've established and ensured for this current uh, uh, councillors that each and every councillor has what you call a war plan for the councillor, which serves as a plan as well for him or her okay. for the five years that they want to do. Mm. So he has the plan. We would t- then take this uh, this plan as well to 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 the IDP, mm-hmm. and we we all that we are saying to the IDP is that there's a plan. This is what the community want for this first year, for this second year, for this third year, for this fourth year. Now it's up to you to put that in the IDP and make sure that your IDP has these programs. Mm. Uh, whether it all goes to the IDP, because the IDP is also talks to your money, but it's yes. also a project first, then the funding. Mm-hmm. Whilst the project might be in the IDP, but some of them are not funded. But also now that you've also got your your your, your one district one model issues, okay. it's also, it's easy for us to be able to say things that are not being done at the municipal level could be done at the district level as well because the district model does not talk to only municipality, but it also talks to other issues which could be your schools or other departments as well. Uh, that same plan mm-hmm. does not stop with the municipality, but it also goes to Cocta. I Cocta see. has those plans. Uh, they need to know what are the people's wishes, their desired outcomes, what projects have they identified within mm-hmm. their areas. So it also goes to Cocta as well. So uh, when it comes to IDP, there's very le- little or less that the IDP office would want to do uh, or find out because mm-hmm. already those programs and projects are with, uh, they are with them. Uh, your mayors and bezos they would add on because uh, not all the people come to this uh, uh, community-based planning workshop mm-hmm. where you deal with and also then establish that there's a, a, a ward plan for each and every municipality or ward for this time, or for the or ward uh, in each and every ward. I see. I mean, now we are right in the center of this year. Half cup, um, cup half full, cup half empty um perhaps it's july now what is your your highlight within your department starting from last year's financial year to this financial year or using just from january to july uh the highlights in terms of our service delivery plans Mm -hmm. uh which started on the first of july last year and ended last year uh, in the main, uh, we've looked at the situation where we want to correct whatever issues or complaints that are there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we need to report each and every complaint that comes to us in within 48 hours and then follow up on that report and see what it has been dealt with. That in the main again, is one other issues. 
The second one is your your war rooms. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have established war rooms in all, not in all, but in fourteen in in thirty nine of our forty of our forty one wars. Only two we have not been able to establish because okay. yeah, of issues of political issues and also. Yeah. But we make sure that at least those war rooms run. The war room is the other issue where people in communities need to go to the war room and where all other departments yeah. should be involved as well to come and deal with their issues. Uh, my concern really now is that yes, some, some war rooms have now been changed and sort of the, the format, they take a form of meetings more than looking at what the people want at mm-hmm. the time and what are their challenges. That's my concern. The other one is also then looking at what uh, audits. We, we audit wards. We go throughout without talking to anybody, finding out what the issues, looking where there are discrepancies and all those ward audits because again, yeah, we know the department where it should go, especially in the municipalities. If there's a water crisis somewhere else, which we have found out potholes, yeah. that we look at any issues that we find, that we know that as the municipality, you cannot deal with it immediately, mm-hmm. like complaints. We bring them back to you and say there are issues in this in this area. Uh, in your next financial year, or do you have any savings now? Where you can at least deal with some of these issues. Mm. We do what odds, okay. and again, uh, I think if you have dealt with issues, we have looked at some of the pedestrian bridges that we need to be dealing with, which have become hazardous for the children that are, are, are crossing those issues. Okay. But that's one of our issues that we are dealing with. Uh, the other one is actual activities that we plan in the municipalities mm-hmm. to make sure that we change the people's lives as well. Uh, ours is more than just being a, a, an official, but we have to facilitate growth mm-hmm. and uh, less dependency from the people and also ensuring that there is some sort of advancement wherever we are as yes. well. That's in the main our issues in terms of facilitation. But also we also look at halls as one of other issues, our, the municipal halls belong to us. Mm-hmm. We are managing those halls. We have managed those halls again since uh, 2017. Okay. But in the main, we've only been able to look at touch some of those halls in the past three years. Okay. Uh, from 2017, we have not had any budget for them. And it's only last year that our first budget again, came through. And we can name a number of halls where we've made changes for. Uh, but it's work in progress as well because if you look at our halls, they have been left idling for quite some time. Mm, uh, mm. So, but it's work in progress that we are dealing with. We are also dealing with an issue of your HIV AIDS. We okay. are dealing with that. Uh, ours is to mitigate whatever situations that we find ourselves in, and also to capacitate people in terms of knowledge and whatever mm-hmm. we are dealing with now. More than that, we also have got a session that a section in our business unit uh, of social workers, uh, which go out there and deal with your social issues, issues and do counselling as well. In HIV/AIDS, we also then deal with your counselling and also testing. Uh, anybody that's tested, uh, okay. we make sure that we send them to a, a nearby clinic, whether it's near for us or whether it's near for him or her so that they could start their ARVs in line with the 95, 95, 95 uh, project that we yeah. have. Yeah. Yes, I see. Mm. But also, as I've said, not uh, those are not the only issues. I of mean, course, of course. Any issues that come through which are new for the municipalities, we are in charge of it. One of the projects that we have started uh, in the past two years is the Animal Pound. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have done the Animal Pound. Uh, we don't have a structure in the municipality that's dealing with that. We are dealing with that as a project. We have visited and did feasibility studies in two of the municipalities. Mm -hmm. Uh, As it is now, we have an MOU uh, with one of the pound masters in in, in Midlands where we are removing stray animals from the roads. But more than that, it's not just that. We have ensured that uh, we have built uh, assisting in building of dips mm-hmm. in the areas of Bumoza and Volin Leila. We have also assisted as well in terms of ensuring that most of the cattle around there are branded. Mm-hmm. Uh, because again, I think again, there's a fear from the cattle owners and fears that okay. again, 
if you brand the cattle, then it becomes mine. If it's unbranded, nobody knows who is it. Mm-hmm. So if you find it on the road, there are two issues. If we find it on the road and it's a stray animal, we don't know whose mm-hmm. cattle it is. Mm-hmm. And if it's impounded, again, you cannot then say it's your animal. But the other issue is that people are refusing to brand animals because again, if it's involved in an accident, then you they know who to, to pay see. The damages. You yeah. have to pay the damages. Mm. So that's the other issue that we are dealing with. But it's work in progress. And again, ours is not to impound animals, but to remove animals and to ensure that the farmers out there, the cattle owners, the livestock owners, they take care of their cattle. If they would take care of their cattle, would not, we, would have, we wouldn't have any work to deal with. Uh, just last week, uh, Friday, not this Friday, the past week Friday, mm-hmm. there was an accident near Henley Dam where a, a, an accident between the motor vehicle and, 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 and a horse. Oh, and you would understand see. what happens again if you mm. hit a horse on the road. But uh, normally people, uh, it's a fatal thing for mm, anybody mm. to be able to be moving with a fast-moving vehicle and you hit especially the, the, this thing in the cattle. And we don't know, we, don't, we can't even find out whose who's, who's horse is it. Mm. And people are running away. I hear you. Also, there's some controversy that knocked on municipal doors a few weeks ago during our election period. Mm. There was a video that went, and pictures actually, that went viral where there were IEC ballots that were being carried in a in a van that was branded mm-hmm. uh, area-based management. And a lot of people <laughs> questioned uh, the authority and the daily happenings of why, firstly, why were, were we in possession of those? And secondly, maybe to clarify as to what led to one of our motos handling such for someone who hasn't fully understood why mm-hmm. mm-hmm. and in most cases yeah Okay. So already there is a, a relationship between IEC no Maspala lawyer in okay. providing such a person mm-hmm. my elections. Yeah. So in hindsight, Umaspala also runs these elections together with IEC. Mm-hmm. And then there's an MOU between these two parties yeah. to assist in the issue of, of infrastructure yeah. uh, in order that elections are conducted. Uh, infrastructure are your halls. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, why are we not getting people asking what, uh, if you can use the car? Uh, if you can't use the car, why can't you use the hall? Why mm. don't you use churches? Mm. It's, it's in the MOU. Yeah. In fact, it's MOU. It, all the political parties have signed the agreement, and they understand and know all that. Yes. Now, when it comes to materials of the IEC, mm. there are two types of materials. Okay. There are sensitive materials, mm-hmm. and there are infrastructure materials. Okay. And now you see, in your question, you spoke about the issue of ballot box. Mm-hmm. That is sensitive material. Mm-hmm. We don't carry that. Okay. Uh, but all IEC materials, which are infrastructure and not sensitive, the logo is the same and the mm. board is the same. Okay. You know, so it's not to get the ballot box that we found or seen in those issues. So it's easy to but mistake it for one. Uh, yeah. Okay. But you, get, you would carry your this thing, your boot, mm. your, your way you where you where, where you sign in and mm. where you mm. where you where you make a tick. Okay. Now that infrastructure again, anybody could who's attached to the IEC could carry that infrastructure. Okay. So IEC is not mass based. We've got forty one wards. Mm. Uh, those materials need to get uh, to almost uh, about six or seven 
or even three voting district within a ward. Mm. So if you multiply, let's say five by 41, it's a lot of places that we need to go to. I hear you. So uh, two weeks before the elections, uh, up to almost uh, five days before the elections, those materials or infrastructures need to be delivered at all these venues with mm-hmm. these. So we deliver that. And in fact, uh, uh, as area-based management, uh, uh, there is no there is no ballot box that we found in the in, in the, but those boxes, other boxes than ballot boxes were found, were delivered in the areas between two weeks and almost three days before the elections. Okay. Now the ballot boxes are collected by managers mm-hmm. uh, in their own vehicles and transported to get to the VDs. We don't get involved in that. Yeah. We don't get involved, and we will never get involved in those issues. Now that is term sensitive material. Mm. And that sensitive material as the municipalities, we don't get involved, we don't transport, we don't do anything else. Even if there were number and too much of those boxes, we'll never be get involved with those issues. So there is no way as part of the air base management, mm-hmm. motor vehicles that transported pilot boxes uh, and again, anyone that has got information which is contrary, they can bring it to us. Uh, maybe in terms of other departments you mm-hmm. know, other vans within the municipalities, we don't know. Okay. But I can vouch for it. In fact, you get, when that video went viral, yes. there were questions that were sent to me <coughs> and the, uh, the pictures that you are talking about, mm-hmm. we made them viral oh, as okay. aerospace based management, you know. Yeah. We would then take photos and say, these are the photos, look at us, you know, and even be able to look at the type of material that are in our vehicles mm-hmm. so that people start to see there is nothing wrong, there is nothing wrong with those things. It's only when you pal- when you transport ballot boxes mm. that you get, that's a challenge. But any other material, which is, for me, is infrastructure and for IEC's mm-hmm. infrastructure, for them to be able to conduct elections, those materials could be uh, distributed by anybody. Yeah. But not ballot boxes and and not your uh, ballot papers. You can't transport that. Well, thank you for clearing that up. Um, Lalil, I'm sure that at this point <laughs> we understand fully and we can really squash this. So, Mr. Lyon, thank you so, 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 so much for being with us today, for taking your time out of your busy schedule. See, I was with me, but busy, me, but my dasa. As I look, um, Bogel, perhaps Kukon is in his into Osafisu Zazi, eh, Osafisa Uguzi Iswa. I would recommend that you visit us again next time when we come back to the podcast. There'll be more information with more other departments, but on top of that, you can visit our webpage, umsunduzi.gov, on www.umsunduz. You'll find it. I think you'll find a lot of information there that we have. Um, also see us on our social media pages. Find us on Facebook, um, Sunduzi Municipality. Find us on TikTok, um, Sunduzi Municipal. Find us on Twitter or X, um, Sunduzi Municipality. But other than that, Mbugeli, Mina Lon, Tombiaga Matondo, your host for today. Until next time, thank you so much.